All right, our reading today is from Genesis 45. It says, Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all his attendants, and he cried out, Make everyone leave my presence. So there was no... Oh, there I am. So there was no one with Joseph when he made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him, and Pharaoh's household heard about it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were terrified at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come close to me. When they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here, because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. For two years now, there has been famine in the land. And for the next five years, there will not be plowing and reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by great deliverance. So then it was not you who sent me here, but God. He made me father to Pharaoh, Lord of his entire household and ruler of all Egypt. Now hurry back to my father and say to him, this is what your son Joseph says. God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me. Don't delay. You shall live in the region of Goshen and be near me, you, your children and grandchildren, your flocks and herds and all you have. I will provide for you there because five years of famine are still to come. Otherwise, you and your household all will be sorry and all who belong to you will become destitute. You can see for yourselves and so can my brother Benjamin. That is really I who am speaking to you. Tell my father about all the honor accorded to me in Egypt and about everything you have seen and bring my father down here quickly. Then he threw his arms around his brother Benjamin and wept. And Benjamin embraced him weeping and he kissed all his brothers and wept over them. Afterwards, his brothers talked with him. Now it's time for Kenny with the news. Wow, what we just read is really amazing. Just prior to that, Joseph wanted to see if his brothers were sorry for what they had done to him. So just like he commanded, they come back from Egypt and they brought their brother, Benjamin, just like he said. And now Joseph designs the scene. So it seems like Benjamin is at risk of being kept in slavery in Egypt. Remember, this is just a test for his brothers but they're distraught. They're really, really sad, and they're very fearful, and so they're pleading with Joseph, and it's for the sake of their father, Jacob, because he would be brought to misery if now two of his sons would be lost, and it's a really moving scene. Judah is the one who takes responsibility for, this, for his father to make sure that Benjamin comes back safe. He says, how can I go back to my father if the boy is not with me? No, do not let me see the misery that would come on my father. Now, remember, Joseph is really powerful. And you don't really speak to a, a, a main man that way, do you? You don't say no, but they had to. Judah was taking responsibility. And it's at this point that we pick up in our passage and Joseph can't control his emotions anymore. Imagine how he must have been feeling. He dismisses his servants so that it's only him and his brothers. And he weeps. He weeps and he cries out and he tells them who he is. And he's so loud that people can hear it all around. He reveals his identity and now his brothers are afraid. They're afraid again because now they're thinking, oh, now we are really in hot water. This is Joseph. This is the man who we sold when he was 17. We sold him away. We thought he was dead. And now he's in a big position of power over us. Do you think he had reason to be afraid? I would have been afraid. Has somebody ever hurt you? Has somebody ever acted in such a way that they, they harmed you and you, you're unable to forget about it? Joseph had a choice. Joseph could choose revenge. Joseph could choose justice and to make things right, but instead he chooses reconciliation. What's reconciliation? 
but he wanted a good relationship again with his brothers. He wanted things to be right the way that they should be, the way that God designs it. And he says, God sent me here ahead of you to rescue you in this amazing way and to make sure that you and your descendants survive. So it wasn't really you who sent me here, but God. Can you imagine Joseph saying something like that? And the brothers must have been like, what? I thought it was, I thought it was us who did that terrible thing, but it, it's God, you say? And remember, all week we've been, we've been remembering about how Joseph chose to trust God, chose to trust God in his big plan. We fast forward to the very, very end of the story, and it's after Jacob dies. It's after the father is dead that the brothers are again with Joseph in Egypt. And they start to get fearful again, and they start to worry that now that the father is dead, what is going to happen? They think, ooh, we might be in trouble now. Joseph might take revenge, but he doesn't. And in one of the most famous verses in this whole story, he says, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. That's the ending of the story. You meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. Notice it doesn't say God used it for good or God turned things around for good. It says God meant it for good. Joseph had to really trust all those years when he was in prison, when he had done nothing wrong, and he was still being put into prison, and he was sad, and he was lonely and cold. And he said, I'm still going to trust in God's plan. And look how it turned out. It turned out amazingly. It's a very happy ending. It's, the story of Joseph is incredible. It's amazing, and it's wonderful. And we talked all week about that story being in the very beginning of this book. We also talked about how all of these stories in this book point to Jesus. That all, that's what all of these stories are about. They're all true, and they all point to Jesus. Now, Joseph is in the very beginning. Joseph is in Genesis, the first book of the Bible. So if the story is that good now at the beginning just imagine how much better it gets. I learned a fun fact yesterday. I uh, did not know this, but you might enjoy to know it. In fact, everyone. Um, Emily was less impressed <laughs> when I told her in the car this morning. But nevertheless, did you know that the original musical, the very first professional uh, premiere, it was 35 minutes long, and do you know where it was held? No, it was held at Haymarket here in Edinburgh in 1972 at the festival. Joseph, what did I say? Just the first music. The first music. <laughs> Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoats. That's the musical that we're talking about. And it was held here. How, how neat is that? And you know what? It's such a wonderful story. It's, it's, it's delighted us all week. We've enjoyed it. It's just been amazing looking at this coat and talking about Joseph and talking about all the things that God has done for him. But that points us to all the things about Jesus. And I'm going to use a little bit more of the Bible, if that's okay, just now. Like Joseph, did you know that Jesus is the son of the Father as well, the beloved, the chosen son of the Father? And Joseph got this amazing Technicolor dream coat, but Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. In him, all things were created, things in heaven and on earth. Whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. That's a pretty big deal. That's what the Bible says about Jesus. That's a lot better than a, a very amazing coat. Like Joseph, Jesus was rejected too when he was born and he went to Egypt, just like Joseph. Like Joseph, Jesus was sold for silver. Remember we talked about that the very first day? And that coat was stripped off of him. Every day we did a recap. And that coat got stripped off of him. 
Jesus had his clothes taken off, but Joseph didn't have anything added to him. Jesus had a crown of thorns put onto his head. Jesus left where he was to become a servant, just like Joseph. Just like Joseph, Jesus was wrongly accused. John said that, but in this case, Jesus was sinned against and left to die. Like Joseph, Jesus shared bondage with two other prisoners of very different natures. John did a really good job of summarizing that. But when Jesus was on the cross, one of them mocked him. One of the criminals on, his, on this side mocked him and, and made jokes about him. And the other guy said, do you know what? This could be the son of God. Let's listen to him. And we have done, we have done our, our, our crimes, but he's not done anything wrong. He's been falsely accused. So Jesus said to that man, truly, I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. Jesus had the power to do that. Like Joseph, Jesus was elevated to a position of authority. It was so cool in our stories when we, when we talked about Joseph and how he was put into this amazing position. Remember on Wednesday, everything turned and he was in prison in the morning and by the night, he was in this big position of authority. Jesus was in control of his suffering and he chose to suffer for us. Like Joseph, Jesus unites us all because he was willing to be that servant. And this is what the story is all about, is reconciliation. That's how the story ends. That's how chapter 50 ends, where the brothers and Joseph are now harmonious again. They're happy again. Things are as they should be, and it's a wonderful ending. And Jesus reconciles us with God, and he gives us the opportunity for things to be as God intended it, for us to be reconciled with God. Remember all of those things that we talked about on Wednesday about sin and about how none of us are perfect, not even Emily? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. But it's true. None of us are perfect. But Jesus came and did all those things voluntarily for us so that we could be forgiven and reconciled to God. A lot in the same way that Joseph reconciled to his brothers. Remember, Joseph trusted God that he had a plan. God does have a plan. He has a plan for your life, for my life, for everyone's life. He's got an amazing plan. And sometimes things might go pear-shaped, sometimes they might go good, but one thing we learn from Joseph is that God is in control, and he loves us, and he's given us a plan for our, our life. I'm going to read one last thing from the Bible, one last thing. You see, a man named Peter was, was telling people about Jesus, and it's in the book of Acts, and it says, when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and all of his friends around him, guys, what shall we do? You might be asking yourselves that same question. What do we do with the stories that we've heard? What do we do with what we've heard about Jesus? Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That is such good news. The story of Joseph is such good news, but the story that leads us to Jesus is so much better. So much better. So thank you, Jesus, for who you are and all that you've done for us. Amen.